My last story for tonight. Well, you would think would be an upbeat story because it's something that people have been fighting for for decades. Reparations. I thought that would be a good thing. Someone said, Tim, they're giving reparations out in Illinois. Evanston in the Illinois, Tim Black. Can you believe it? I'm like, hell no, I don't believe it, Johnson. I don't even know where that went. I got too pissed off, I guess. Evanston, Illinois leads the country with first reparations program for black residents. Now, this will be the nation's first reparations program for African Americans. It was approved Monday night in Chicago, suburb of Evanston, an action that advocates say represents a critical step in rectifying wrongs caused by slavery, segregation, and housing discrimination. Right now, the whole world is looking at Evanston, Illinois, at Evanston. This is a moment like none other that we've ever seen. And it's a good moment, said Ron Daniels, president of the National African American Reparations Commission. The Everson City Council approved the first phase of reparations to acknowledge the harm caused by discriminatory housing policies, practices, and inaction going back more than a century. The eight to one vote will make $400,000 available. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Just there are people who do videos on YouTube that make more more than four hundred thousand dollars, Johnson. Let me try to get through this. Oh, let me explain. This is not reparations. It's like giving someone with, someone with a de decapitated arm a Band-Aid. I don't even think you could call it that. It's like giving a well a Tic Tac. Shout out to Adele Gibbons. Look, the, the 8 to 1 vote will make $400,000 available in 25000 and 25,000 home ownership and improvement grants, as well as in mortgage assistance for black residents who can show they are direct descendants of individuals who lived in the city between 1919 and 1969. So, the housing money is part of a larger $10 million package approved for continued reparations initiatives, which will be funded by income from annual cannabis taxes over the next decade. Okay. That feels a little better. Black residents make up about 16% of Everson's population of 75,000. They're a small town. That feels better. But this is not reparations. Because this is about home ownership. But as with all things, Johnson, what do I do? I support anybody getting any type of relief who's been catching hell. I don't care if it's a, a pitly ass $1,400. I don't go, yay, $1,400, thank you so much. I go, good. Keep it coming. Back the truck up. But we, we, we hurting too much to turn it down. It doesn't mean stop pressing. It doesn't mean we good. It means we'll take it. What else you got? Same thing here. Any family who benefits from this program, whose parents, like my parents, were discriminated against from buying property in certain locations, 
which would have changed the lives of their children and all of their descendants who benefits from this program, I'm happy for you. I'm very happy for you. It's not enough, but I'm happy that you're getting some form of relief. More than 60 people spoke out about, spoke before the vote, many endorsing the resolution and calling for the city to take the historic step. Others criticized it and pleaded for more time to reshape the plan. Housing assistance detractors said is it isn't a credible form of reparations. I agree. There's always this problem, guys. When someone wants to address your issues, you may not get another bite at the apple. So I understand both sides of it. There's always my side where it's like, we want more, we'll take this, and we're going to come back for more. But there's always the fear, if you take this, there'll be no more. They'll say, hey, we gave you that, we gave you the quarter last week. Well, I didn't get a quarter. Yeah, but other people that look like you got a quarter. You don't get a quarter. You moved here in 1970. Somehow discrimination, it stopped magically in 69. Yeah, we, we hated blacks so much, we only let them live in the, the tenements till 69. After 69, y'all were able to live only in the tenements, but we're not counting that. So understand the logic and the, and the frustration. I see both sides. It's sort of like the people who constantly say, why are these black people not doing me more research? Why do they vote for Biden? Who never go, hey, why do all these white people vote for Biden? Or never go, hey, why do these people vote for Trump? But still, for some reason, they look at one group. They don't look at the context of the situation and they go after black people and blame them. I saw this just today. The people that are complaining that this is not good enough, we shouldn't do this, we need to reshape this, let's get it right, are the people that are worried that we have, right now we're in a, a special moment where people are being receptible, receptive, receptive to this idea, let's do it right, let's make it bigger and do it right. The issue of reparations has been one that's been brought up for decades. Not just last year. When you start going ADOS, but like decades, man. Decades. My mom talked to me about this shit when I was four. In the wake of anti-racism demonstrations that swept the country last summer after the killings of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor in Louisville, California established a task force to propose a model for reparations. Chicago and several other cities are discussing reparations programs of their own, figuring, figuring out how to build a reparations program that addresses redlining and segregation from the past century. It's much different than those designed to, to bring redress for the slave trade, primarily because individuals from the Jim Crow and civil rights era are still alive and could directly benefit. City leaders decided to first address housing following a report last year that showed how, starting with the arrival of the first black resident in 1855, Evanston restricted where blacks could live. Over the decades, policies, practices, and patterns of discrimination and segregation took place. The report said, together, they not only impacted the daily lives and well-being of thousands of Evanston residents, but they also had a material effect on occupations, education, wealth, and property. You know, I always find it hilarious. It's not hilarious. I always find it interesting that people tend to see the world through their own lens, which is not interesting, but they say, if I don't have this, or if I don't got, if I don't have something, why should anybody else expect more? There are things that happen to individuals that are horrific, and then there are things that systemically were, were directly 
created to stop mass group a mass group of people. Your daddy may have not benefited from the New Deal. I understand that. But the country, the U.S. government, state governments who acted to stop all of black people, not just your daddy. You understand? There's a difference, Johnson. I know it doesn't materially feel like a difference in your life or your world because you poor, you grew up poor. But there was nothing on the books. There was no government, systemic government policy or practice to disenfranchise you intentionally. And not just you, everybody white. And I, I, know, I know some people are like, Tim, you don't have to say that. I know I don't. I shouldn't. But since they don't say it on MSNBC, they don't say it on CNN, they never say it on Fox. In fact, today while the Boulder, Colorado shooting was being reported, Fox is doing this. Here goes the snapshot of simultaneous what was going on on several screens at one time. While CNN and MSNBC were covering the shooting in Colorado, look what Hannity's talking about. See that? <clears throat> so when people are saying, "Why did just people? Why did these people vote for this guy?" What they what are they watching? What news are they watching? I know it's not right, but you see that, right? How can someone research something and discover something that they haven't been made aware of? That's why we exist, and they're doing their best to stop us from educating people. There's so much misinformation, false narratives, and bullshit out there, it's ridiculous. And that's why I say we here at TVTV are going to double down on our efforts and do our best. I have no quitting me. I'm not quitting. I just have to get smarter and better. I covered the story of Biden on the staircase because I also showed how when it was Trump, Walking downstairs, they covered it. Oh, they covered the hell out of it. I didn't stay on it. It was one day. Five days later, Hannity's still talking about it. When people find the channel, they see that, they have an expectation. Oh, it's going to be like Hannity. Because no matter how hard we fight, guys, Wolfpack, no matter how hard we fight, the majority of America sees America in one or two ways. Democrat or Republican. And then, they, and then if you are critical of any other group after they find you, they say you're a flip-flopper. They don't say you're balanced. This is bullshit. These people do not want balance. They want their biases confirmed. They would rather you lie to them then confuse them. You understand. They don't want to know their husband is cheating. They don't want to know their wife got three kids in El Segundo that she left. Moved here and started a new life. They don't want to know. So anyway, guys, uh, we'll be back tomorrow with phone lines opening up, the phone number, just so, I don't know, because we're here and I got the phone number. It's the number you're dialing to tomorrow so that you can talk because Lord knows I need the help. And you matter on this show. This show, you matter. 
Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't be fooled by corporate media talking heads misleading the people. Get your news and information from an entity that keeps it real. Tim Black. Tim Black is the host of The Tim Black Show. Independent news that leaves you informed, inspired, and sometimes entertained, but always in the know. Go to TimBlackTV.com and sign up today. The Tim Black Show is news for people who can't stand the news. See you there.